Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today I just want to give an upfront and apologize that this video is going to be very very long. I'm going to do my best to timestamp everything but we have a lot to cover and I really want to talk about how I found the perfect sensitivity for me. I felt confident finally making this video because I have been experimenting for many many years and I can confidently say this is probably the happiest that I've ever been with my sensitivity. And I don't think that I'm going to be changing it anytime soon. And I've discovered so many different variables that I really want to discuss with you guys today. We're going to also do a VOD review once I discovered this. And the beauty of what, when this happened is that I discovered it live on stream. So I want to go through that VOD and go through the thought process and why once I started feeling the sensitivity, why it really started to work for me. So today's topics, we're going to discuss DPI. We're going to discuss the sensitivity that I settled on. We're going to also break down 500 versus 1000 hertz, the various mouse pads that I've utilized, mouse acceleration, the various mouse mice that I've used. I got the G Pro and the G Pro Super Light here. Also, we're going to talk about my ADS sensitivity. We're going to talk about why I choose toggle versus hold and my grip style. So there's a lot to break down here. And the reason why I'm taking you through my journey is the biggest disclaimer I can give here. I repeat, do not do not copy another person's sensitivity and as i break down everything i really want you to understand how i catered it to my experience and my strengths and weaknesses and i discovered these strengths and weaknesses throughout the years i know this is going to feel very granular it's going to feel like too many too much detail and it's like why are you over complicating this process well i'm doing it so then you don't have to waste your time i would prefer if you watch this video and you say what works for you and what does it and rule these things out so you don't waste years and years of your life like i guess i have and I guess it's not a waste because I'm making this video and hopefully it helps somebody out there and that's going to be literally my goal. The same thought process can apply to controller when you're trying different settings. And so let's just get into it. So Apex Legends, just for context, is a very difficult first person shooter, in my opinion. Now the reason for that, when I came over from Battlefield, most battles always occurred right from a 180 frontal conal view. Meaning an enemy would be here, here. It'd be very rare when you spawn that you would ever have an enemy that would surprise you all the way from the back because you would have 32 people charging forward. And you never really had to worry about your flank. Now, Apex Legends, because it's a battle royale, you have to worry about people that are right behind you. This is why I mentioned consistently you have to have a pretty comfortable flick to be able to do a 180 because you never know if they're going to flank from right behind your building or if you're going to have to wall bounce and then make an adjustment. Even at, like, let's say you wall bounce and you have to flick a certain direction just to kind of switch it up. And then one minute later, you have to track. You have to do a, an instant smooth track to track an enemy as they're going across or control a recoil from a distance or even hit really small targets from really, really far away. An example, there's a target all the way over there. So this is a lot to unpack. So because of that, it has pushed me to my limits to understand what sensitivity works for me. Now, an example I will give in terms of sensitivity of high versus low before we break everything down. You know what? Actually, let's, we'll talk about it in a moment. Let's get into DPI. Let's go through the structure. This video is not all, all over the place. And the reason I'm structuring the video this way, I really want to make it feel like I'm just talking to you in the room as if we're breaking everything down. Now, DPI. I have tried low DPI of 400, 800, 1,800, and originally I was on 1,800. Now, I reverted back to 1,800 after using a low DPI is that the biggest thing I found in Apex Legends at a low DPI is that the menu speed is a lot lower. Now, the menu speed being a lot lower and with already having to move your arm around like crazy across a screen, I found was already even more taxing having to move my hand across a menu. And then let's say if I needed to scroll down, it was just a lot more taxing. Now, that taxing adds up over the course of many hours, it, surprisingly. I remember my first experience on Fortnite not getting used to doing a full 180s. My sensitivity was much lower. I had found that the DPI setting mirroring your sensitivity, you can get the same inches per 360, but I leaned again over to a higher DPI. This also helped with mouse acceleration. So again, there's nothing wrong with a lower DPI. It does create sens a different sensation. It creates consistency and the lower DPI, what it stands for is dots per inches or I mean, that's what it stands for. Sorry for using the Imperial system. I'm going to use it in a minute and then I'll convert to also centimeters. So to kind of capture what high versus low DPI is going to change menu speed. It changes your cursor on your desktop. And of course, the sensation, the feeling, I would say higher DPI feels floatier. It's a floatier feeling that I've gotten used to over the years. And the lower DPI just feels a little bit more sharp. 
that's the the best way to describe it this is going to come down to personal preference just try them out try both extremes and see which one works best for you and then maybe even find a middle ground now sensitivity let's talk about sensitivity because these pair very closely together and i apologize for mixing those two together now sensitivity i utilize 0 0.527009 now the reason my sensitivity is so low is so i can have a solid inches per 360 so if i were to do a full 360 then it's around 17.25 inches per 360. i don't know offhand the centimeters i believe it's somebody can convert it for me in the description down below i'm recording this pretty much all in one take now the thought process here i have utilized 12.5 all the way to around 21 inches per 360. Apologize for using the Imperial system, so that's converted. I was comfortable probably around 27 centimeters, 28 centimeters, all the way to 52 centimeters per 360. So just so you understand, I have tried a wide spectrum of sensitivities, and this is my experience. And I'll use Timmy because he just had an experience on his live stream because he uses a very high sensitivity compared to me. And there's no right or wrong sensitivity. You really just want to achieve the goal where you can control your mouse and have a fluid mo movement. Or even if you're doing a full 360, knowing that you have that control and then you can instantly track. So I had found throughout the years, whenever I utilize a low sensitivity, I was very precise and very accurate, especially when sniping and everything I was doing. Now the downside is that I struggled over the course of several hours because you're moving your mouse a lot. So whenever I even tried games like Fortnite and you had to do, you know, you had to build and you had to do that crazy movement that you're seeing on screen, you see it all the time in third person mode in Fortnite. I remember the tension in my forearm that I immediately got and it was sore there for about two or three days. And that's, you can call that muscle tension, tendon growth, whatever you want to call it. But I found over the course of years that a low sensitivity, especially in my shoulder, this whole really impacted. Now, another thing that impacts this is the way you sit. So the way you sit is very, very important. But I found after longer gaming sessions, especially on Apex Legends, because of how demanding it was, that a low sensitivity was very, very difficult for me. And it's not to say that it was bad. I just found that to keep the the performance that I'm looking for. I wanted to conform always at a high tier and a high caliber that the lower sensitivity just was not working for me. And that's because it could be also my age and it could also be just my, I'm not the tallest person in the world and I don't have the largest arm span in the world. So it, maybe it could be taxing because of my body as well. And I thought about that consistently. I was like, if I just was a bit, had a longer arm span, this would probably be a lot easier. But realistically, I'm not the tallest dude, I'm not the shortest one, but I know if I had a larger arm span that perhaps this would be a little bit easier to control. That was the thought process there. So I settled on 17.25. I, at one point, was using 13.42. I've even, tr I tried going higher sensitivity. I have tried as much as I've tried, but my hands are just not steady enough for it. I it could be genetics it could just be the way my hands are built and how it works but i have never been able to find the smoothness after training and training and training and training it and i just have left it to that's just the way my genes work like timmy he uses a high sensitivity so that's what i was going to reference timmy uses a much higher sensitivity one that i can control and have that dexterity and smoothness that he has with his aim props to Timmy for it, but even after his, keep, keep in mind, it was a long stream session that he had, after having an extremely long stream session of around 56 hours, that his shoulder started to hurt. Now, just imagine if he was using a lower sensitivity and trying to maintain that. Now, of course, that also depends on your build and how you do things, and I have found throughout the years of high versus low sensitivity that my physique also impacted, so the leaner I was, the better I was at controlling a higher sensitivity the heavier it was the harder it became that could also be my eating habits and how i was controlling things but even now as i continue to lose weight and it could be rowing of why my hands the way they feel and has impacted my higher sensitivity for better or for worse but it's definitely helped me find the middle ground in terms of my forearm my strength and consistency so that is why i settled on this I just really want you to understand when you're finding low versus high sensitivity, just trying to find the breed, uh, the difference and the comfortable, how comfortable you are between just doing 180s and doing 360s and having that movement and then being able to replicate it consistently whenever you're tired and whenever you're performing it on your best day and your worst day. So I think that sums up sensitivity and trying to find it. Now, next is 500 versus 1000 polling rate. So I found 1000 versus 500 polling rate. I use 500 for, I want to say like half a year. So six months. 
and then I used a thousand. I went back to it. Now, yes, there is a thing about using the uh, the thousand polling rate and it feeling it, it, the best way to describe it is high versus low DPI. It just feels a lot more responsive. The difference is one milliseconds to two milliseconds. To the most people, it's almost undecipherable. You won't be able to really tell. I can kind of feel it. And that is only because after thousands of hours of aim training, uh, I just feel like the impact isn't as massive as most people think, but it is there to make its its relative distance and how it feels. Like if I were to move my mouse and switch it to 500, it just feels a little bit, uh, it just doesn't feel as sharp or responsive. It's like having the NVIDIA booster setting, you know, it's like it's there and yes, it's helpful, but it doesn't make and break. It's just something so slight that it almost feels like a trigger delay lack for a better word but still not exactly like that this one's difficult i highly recommend at this point just kind of keeping it at a thousand but try 500 give it a shot to see if it feel if it feels good for you i know 500 hertz paired with a lower dpi tends to be a nice combo and then a thousand hertz paired with a higher dpi is also a nice combo as well you can mix and match these and see what works for you i have found personally that the higher hertz especially when sniping with a higher dpi just feels a lot more fluid and feels a lot more comfortable for me and I was always able to snag a bit more shots consistently. That's from my experience. And I hopefully through your, my thought process, why I settled on a thousand Hertz. So again, summing up 500 versus a thousand sharper, more delayed feeling versus a floatier, more responsive one, a slightly more responsive one. Now, remember also games last tip in terms of 500 versus a thousand. Some games don't even let you utilize full a thousand Hertz because it's just the way the game is coded and how the inputs are put in. Now let's talk about mice really quick and my journey through it just briefly. So I have several mice here. Now something important to know is that I have been going back and forth between the Super Light and the G Pro regular G Pro mouse consistently. And if we look at the bottoms here, you'll see that the surface in which it t makes impact with the mouse pad is very, very different. So when they're different like this, the interesting part is just how much it covers. And you would think that with the lighter mouse that this would provide a speedier feel, like it would feel faster. But where the mice feet are placed makes such a big difference. So if I'm moving this one around, I can almost feel the, the pressure and the tug on the upper part right here more so. You just feel it a bit more versus whenever I use the more rounded, it kind of equals out the space. And it, I don't feel this tug as much here, even though this mouse is heavier. But that is where you kind of find the balance because I have one of the heavier mouse, the, the G502, and on this mouse pad, specifically the one I'm using, which will segue to in a minute talking about mouse pads, the interesting that, thing that I have found is that I know you won't be able to hear it, but you instantly hear more of the friction versus when you're using this one. This one has a, a, a quieter sound. So I know people say, oh, it's crazy. There's no difference between hot, heavier versus light mice. There is. But also remember how much the friction point touches the bottom of the mouse versus when it doesn't. And and you notice here I removed this one just to kind of give a, a more extreme example of how it feels. So this does make an impact. And this does impact whether you use a higher DPI or a higher sensitivity or a lower one. Because you might use a higher sensitivity on the heavier mouse because you just need it to feel a lot more stable. And that does impact your grip style. It impacts the speed and it impacts the friction when you're moving the mouse around and how it feels and the speed around it. So the mouse is really important. Just kind of find what works for you and then essentially kind of balance it out between your comfort zone. I have, I'm not, I'm gonna be honest, after doing this for several years and moving, you know, mice around and then messing around with these settings consistently, I always seem to go back to the pretty much the same setting. So if I get a higher mouse, I just instantly raise the sensitivity a bit to find that sweet spot. If I use a lighter mouse, then I lower the sensitivity a bit. If I'm using 17.25 on this mouse for inches per 360, then, and I apologize for using the apparel system again, American guest dated system, and then I use this mouse, I would probably speed this one up just slightly if I use this to find that the sweet spot of how it feels. And I, when I'm chasing a sensitivity, all I found was I'm just kind of like finding the equilibrium and I'm not really actually making massive changes and my body is telling me what I would prefer and what I don't. Now, and that's why I started using mouse acceleration where I was really struggling trying to find the right sensitivity. Now, I would highly recommend people do not use mouse acceleration, but I'm going to provide the justifications why I decided to use it is that I like to have a fast sensitivity like you're seeing. I pretty much paired my bigger, more broad movements 
with acceleration. I ended up not using the slowdown effect with acceleration just because it was too much for me to control going too slow. So I left it at a base of one as a multiplier, but then as I move faster, then it, it, it you know, you can see that it moves faster as well. But I found that this feels really, really comfortable for me. It, pr it pretty much lets me have the, the tracking of a low sensitivity, but also the speed of a faster one. And I, the only reason I made this decision was because over the years, I had really found that I started to feel a lot more comfortable versus a, a, throughout a range of sensitivities. I would one minute use a low sensitivity and blow all my scores out of the water aim training, or then go in Apex and just absolutely farming destroy lobbies. Then I would find on a higher sensitivity, I would be missing those flicks, those big, the big flicks of the speed and the dexterity over time or flicking between targets comfortably and hitting, you know, boom, 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 and bouncing back and forth between targets. I felt like I was missing that. So when I, what I did is I ended up pairing the mouse acceleration with my sensitivity and that's where I found that sweet spot. Now, the reason I use toggle as a sensitivity, so if I click my mouse and then I don't touch it, it stays ADS, is because I've been aim training for far too long. This is probably a mistake on my part. And so my advice if you're aim training is to hold down your right mouse click. The problem that I found is that if I'm aim training, I'm not right holding down the right mouse click button, then I'm just training this movement. So then I pretty much had to end up using the sensitivity for whenever you just toggle ADS. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's just what I had found. So now whenever I pull down and I know what it feels like, right? And it feels super sharp and it feels clean, but then I use toggle. That is my justification for using it. And that's what I went with. And then to kind of wrap up in terms of grip style, I ended up sticking with fingertip grip. Fingertip grip for me, because my hands are, as you can tell, not the largest. And like you can see from the, the Cape Town, Palm grip just wasn't enough for me to give the dexterity that I needed, especially with smaller movement. I had found whenever I ADSed that it felt a lot more comfortable with a fingertip grip, so I had the wiggle room. If I used too large of a mouse, then I didn't have the ability to flick it left and right, left and right, but fingertip just kind of felt the most comfortable. The reason why it's fingertip is because I'm not touching the back. My hand tends to arc around the corner here, and that's just what feels the most comfortable for my hand specifically so that's just kind of the breakdown there um, again what we covered here is dpi low versus high sensitivity low versus high mouse hurts the pad that i use now i guess i didn't cover that let's talk about that real quick i use the two pads i really like are the artisan extra soft the fx zero and the artisan hein the artisan hein is a lot faster and the fx zero and i've been bouncing between these two trying to figure out if I want to go with the, the slower one or I want to go with the faster one. I honestly feel like the difference is pretty minor now because I adjust pretty quick to both of them. It's just a matter of, I guess, just getting used to it and that comes down to personal preference. But I can feel the tug more on the FX0 just slightly, but whenever I'm really gliding, then I stop feeling it as much. The Hein also has a bit of resistance, but is a faster pad compared to the FX0. But this is also impactful of how much contact the mice feet are making at the bottom. So that's my justification. I've used a lot of mouse pads. I've used the Logitech G640. I've used the uh, I've used Corsair pads. I've used oh gosh, I have 12 of them. I have a mouse mouse review of like just going through 12 different mouse pads. But that's just listing a few. I've used like six different artisan ones. I have used the the QCK and the Plus. All of those pads, and this is just what I've settled on after using all of them, including the GSR and the GSR um, other mouse pads as well. So I think that covers everything. So now what I'm gonna do is go through a VOD and I'm gonna explain whenever it finally hit and clicked where I felt really comfortable with the sensitivity that I was using on stream and then why I haven't switched since. All right, so let's go into that. Okay, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go through the VOD whenever I found the perfect sensitivity and talk about whenever I know, when you can see where there's weaknesses in the aim and the strengths. So this is the first, one of the, I think the, probably the second or third game, but when it finally really clicked. Actually, I think this is the first game. So I'm getting used to the sensitivity and kind of moving around. But you can see where when you're using a sensitivity where you have to do a lot more movement, look at the ground and keep your crosshairs also at head level and constantly flick and then go into the menu and drop loot and get right, pretty much right back into the game. So what I'm going to do is kind of skip to each of the fights. This is where I got 19 kills. Let's go back to the end real quick and let's showcase how much damage we actually had so you guys can see it. This, I had 19 kills of 4,472 damage, so this is another 20 bomb that I almost got. I think we can learn a lot from the engagements and where I can highlight my weaknesses are with the aim. And so whenever, let's go right into this here. 
So I knew right off the rip with the sensitivity that this was going to be a lot faster and that I was probably going to struggle with the speed of the sensitivity. But as you can tell, even hitting more precise targets, that wasn't, that wasn't too bad right off the rip. And with the 3x aiming down sight, since I do not match that with my hip fire, it was definitely a lot slower of a sensitivity. But this was not too bad to overall control early on. So you can see that I do have my flicks and that I can move around quite a bit. And I have the control. This, I guess these fights and this damage right here. Look at that poor Watson go. Really counts more. Doesn't really count towards aim, but you can see I'm a little bit uncomfortable with it initially. And you're going to see that. Like those those two shots, I over flicked to left and right, even though I just needed to keep my hand stable. And I'm missing these shots. And I think I mentioned how frustrating it is. And there we go. And then I land the shot. So what I discovered more initially already using this and looking back is seeing how the small movements I needed to work on with the sensitivity just a bit more. But it, it, it's overall the, the base is there. And for using this right off the rip and just trying a different sensitivity isn't that bad. My turn speed was a little slow initially that I have already started to improve upon and get better with. But at least I'm able to go from point A to point B with a target and flick. And there goes a lot more stability. So once I, you identify where the stability needs to happen and how much you need to move, I start to move less and flick less of a pro as less of a problem. And I tried that in the thought process here. As I pulled a 3x, I was like, I felt a little uncomfortable with the the micro shots. So I thought with the 3x, I would get a little bit more comfortable. But then I realized how much how overwhelming it was. So I went ahead and go. F I went to my hip fire because that's where I feel comfortable with, especially with aim training. And because that's where I feel comfortable aim training, I diverted to that, and that's where you saw the flick happen, and I landed that shot on him. So we're going to skip ahead. I'm only going to focus on the firefights here of using the sensitivity, and this is where I've stuck with it since because of just how much damage I was able to nail. And so what I saw there was that I had a stable shot, but then my flick follow-up, I just was under shooting. I guess because I was worried about over flicking. That's less of a problem now after a month on the sensitivity that I have found. And there's going to be a massive firefight here in just a second. So it's not too bad. That's pretty clean. And these shots, my stability once I flick is really, really nice on the sensitivity that I have found. But the flicks that you see close range there and you see the corrections that I'm trying to make are a bit of the problem. But it's not bad overall. And it's why I stuck with this one for so long and I have not switched. Especially with the wingman, you do a lot more correcting and flicking more than anything. And it could be a little bit cleaner and tighter, but overall not too bad. So I go for a res, but there is another team that we fight here in just a second that I want to highlight. See how that original flick there is? And this is where it would just come from comfort. But that flick there at my lower sensitivity might not have been as fast, but I was able to correct and get the follow-up shot. But now that I have a lot more time with this sensitivity, those shots are a lot more accurate than, than they used to be. But it really clicked knowing that that was my natural instinct to kind of flick that far and to get that. And this was a solid cleanup. I'm using positioning. Keep in mind, it's not all aim and no brain. I'm using that guy for cover. And once I have the advantage, I just went ahead and push. Almost got myself killed, but I figured going aggro would be the play. And luckily... It was, but that's why you use your friend's shields for cover, especially whenever you're trying to, well, play these situations smart, right? So let's skip ahead. Let's go into the next firefight and see how my aim does. So tracking, especially with the R301, specifically pretty clean, not too bad. The recoil control, as you can tell, is really, really solid. So whenever I saw that with the sensitivity, knowing that I can control recoil pretty comfortably, I stuck with it. I think this team runs. We had our jump pad looking for positioning again this was all done live i'm just reviewing again just kind of the thought process since it's been a solid it, i guess it's been less than a month this was on the 25th so this is less than a month on the sensitivity but knowing that i was able to so comfortably switch to this for the first time um and it just really really paid off i think this guy pretty much gave up when i just saw him stood that stand there you see where the tracking is really nice there where and that's because it's a 3x that's why the 3x is my favorite s scope but also where I'm able to flick, but it doesn't feel like I'm trying, like I'm having to like kill myself over it. And I'm landing a lot of shots there. I just feel very comfortable on the sensitivity. And the more I'm using it, you, you see me less over flick 
but then able to do the 180s. You see what I'm talking about? Being able to do 180 and, and check angles and check where things are at, but being able to control recoil as well. So I, I stopped the res because I wanted to help the teammate because I realized he was pushing. And that was kind of the thought process there. Otherwise, I think if I completed it, my the buddy would have died and I wouldn't have had him also in the engagement to help block. The enemy was doing a great job hiding behind the shields, but luckily the recoil control was there and I was able to kind of blast right through it. Let's go into the next firefight. So we're rotating, rotating. I'm looking for kills at this point, just having fun with the team and vibing. I believe all these guys and that recoil control is just so sharp. I, you know what's crazy? I almost think I had better recoil control in this video than I do currently even. So it, it makes me think back of like what was working in this because it almost looks like there's no recoil <laughs> when I'm controlling it. It's really, really, really clean. And see that nice 180 flick. The problem that I would have at a lower sensitivity is I wouldn't be able to control that. And with Watson fences and putting them all down, granted I don't play as much Watson now, but it does require quite a bit. And that control right there, landing a lot of shots, very clean, but also able to check my angles as well relatively quickly without having to just destroy my shoulder. And that's because of mouse acceleration that I have here, which is which was pretty nice. Our buddy unfortunately left. I think our guy was thinking that we were gonna die, but somehow we managed to clutch it out. So we're just holding and just trying to reset, trying to avoid getting pushed at all costs and just kind of putting pressure, waiting for the other teams to make a mistake. I know the zone is going to close. I missed those wingman shots. I didn't lead far enough. I hit my buddy in the back there, but at least it did laser and we know they have to come out. They're gonna take a lot of damage here and there's one knock and the rest of them just pretty much died his zone just from the pressure knowing that we're there and present. But this was uh, this is solid. You can see the, the control that I had with the recoil was a lot smoother. And it really helps you identify, it, and this happens naturally. If you use the sensitivity and it just works, and I see the guy, I didn't even see the guy res in front of me. He actually could have shot me, but then he died his own. But you see immediately, this is why I gravitate towards the 3X, is just I love to be able to see pretty much what's in front of me. But this happens whenever you find a sensitivity that really works for you. You can tell pretty, pretty closely within the first short bit that it's going to work for you or it's not going to work for you. So try to keep all of that in mind. We're using these sensitivities that how fast it is to identify and then stick with it for a while. I've stuck with this one for a, a really good while, a good long while now. And because of that, I have not switched and that has made a pretty big payoff. Don't fall victim of the placebo effect of using a sensitivity then it works and then just switching consistently. Make informed decisions of why you're changing your sensitivity. Ask yourself, does it, do you feel shoulder pain? Does it cause tension, un unwanted tension? Are you comfortable? And if you're comfortable, that's where the sweet spot is. And then some days you'll find that you're just in a different mindset than others and keep that in mind whenever you're playing as well. So this last fight takes a really, really long time and where the damage really pads up because there's only one squad remaining. And they give us a, lot, a hard time. Like I lasered that guy for 144. That was a really, really clean laser there. So I was watching. They, they just keep running and this is kind of a problem. I'm, I'm Watson, so I can't really push out in the open. But I know at least I have, my aim is on point. And then, I mean, essentially you see that I had 4,400. So I do an additional 600, or excuse me, 800 before I actually finally get these guys and they have height right now so I can't really run out in the open I have a Bangalore that provides smoke but I don't have any utility to jump pad away or do much of anything so if I rotate I got to do it pretty smart just to make sure I don't get caught out and that's what I'm constantly doing when I'm rotating here so when we look I finally get a little bit of a jump on him here and I'm just t trying to take angles it's so hard to push as Watson you can play this game solo but you have to you don't pretty much have to play Watson as if you're playing a military sim game where you just can't push out in the open and it's it can be very frustrating but seeing that recoil control here and the comfort level it just makes such a, a big difference when you're controlling your sensitivity and your aim i didn't really snag a whole lot there i was trying to keep just everything dead center steady and keep in mind that as you shoot targets from further away that recoil control gets a little bit more difficult to do so snag some damage there Again, it's just piling up. I know in the voiceover when you're watching this live, I'm trying to just secure the kill and I'm constantly getting cracks, but there's nothing to push on. 
I know if I push, the problem that I, the concern I have is if I push somebody that I get damaged and then I'll get shot at a crossfire. So that guy's laser, then I see the octane on the right here, right? And then I don't push on this because I know if I push, which I'm trying to do, and I'm trying to get a different angle here, that if I go in on this, that all I'm going to do is just get lasered if I'm right out in the open. So I'm constantly trying to take a different angle to see if I can catch one out just to finish them off. And I know by the time I pushed here that if they have bats or they have cells that they're pretty much topped off. They have white armor, but my buddy is so far behind me that I don't feel confident pushing in. I get another crack, but then I then there's the shot, and then I don't... This is what I was always concerned about in terms of this angle and what I'm doing. So I got two flush... My Bangalore I'm really concerned about. She's dropping like a fly. She gets her 1v1. I didn't know that she was fighting somebody down there, but I did at least hunker it down. The enemy team is probably calling, and this is why they jump pad in. This is where I, I realize I'm just whiffing, and it could be the comfort with the sensitivity, and then I hit fire him. I literally almost got destroyed there. And I think as I smoothed out with the sensitivity, this became a lot easier to control. I probably wouldn't have whiffed those shots, but whiffing does happen. Even if you're really comfortable in a sensitivity. And then I go for the shots and we snag the dub. Which is, this is 19 kills. And you saw every pretty much engagement outside of the rotations. And we were down at a teammate of why I wasn't able to push. It's really hard to push as Watson. And then we secure the damage of 4,472 with 19 kills. With one assist and 19 knocks. Really what I learned here with the sensitivity and re-watching it. Was just how confident I was with the recoil. And where my weaknesses were with the flicking. And you can do this with your VODs and really work to improve your aim and constantly get better and better. So I know this video is really long. I just hope as people follow the thought process of my journey through sensitivity that it really helps you out to really improve. And find your weaknesses and flaws. Because no matter what setting you use, there's always going to be a weakness. It's just identifying if you're okay with that weakness and can you compensate for it with skill in other areas. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys all in the next video.